Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of the Butterfly Princess Show. Today I'm joined by Katie Rose, who is found who is, who is the member of um, the Rose Window and Katie is um many things. She's a writer, a singer, a coach, and she does work with clients. And um, now I'm really excited to talk to Kate today about her musical career and um, she's also a fellow podcaster so I'm really looking forward to chatting to her about that today as well. So hi Katie, thank you for joining us. Hello, it's so lovely, I really appreciate you inviting me, That's thank you so much, it's lovely to be here. Thank you, and I'm, I'm glad that you agreed to meet with me as well. So, could you tell us about your singing career to start with? Yeah, for sure. So, I just always sang um, as from a child, and like many of us do, naturally, we do sing as children. And I grew up, I was lucky that I grew up in a musical family, so therefore that was encouraged and I was encouraged to be musical and we played a lot and sang a lot at home as children and so it was kind of there right from the beginning and I knew when I was about 15 had quite a powerful kind of realization that for me singing was a very deep profound thing and therefore I wanted to use my voice and to explore that for myself and also help other people with it and then since then it's just been a real Technicolor adventure, really, of running around the place, doing, making music wherever I can with people in lots and lots of different ways, lots of different settings, creating music myself and also helping other people find their voice. And I'm really passionate about that. I believe everyone has a voice and it's so important that we honour and discover our own voices and support other people's as well. So what kind of music or voices do you sort of work with or because there's all different types of music and voice sounds like there's opera, there's pop and stuff like that. So what 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 sort of voice voices do you work with? That's that's a great question. So as a musician myself, I've got a quite eclectic taste in music, and I personally love singing all sorts of different music. And I think you can take. You can take songs from any genre and do something really exciting with them. Um, but I particularly work a lot with folk, um, English folk music. I'm very interested as well in the folk traditions from different countries in the world. Um, I am also love singing pop, as we all do. Love having a sing along to some pop and also jazz. And uh, I also, I've worked with orchestras. I've worked with some classical orchestras. So I'm really quite eclectic in in who I work with. I'm I generally, in terms of my coaching and the work that I do generally, um, I mean I don't coach opera and classical and music theatre people because that's a very those are all very specialist realms. So I don't have expertise in those realms. But I do coach people in pretty much every other kind of music, I guess, pop and folk and world and yeah, all these different genres. And I think especially because I live in London, it's a wonderfully diverse, amazingly cultural place. So I'm always learning and listening out for the songs that I hear around me from the co different communities I live amongst So and within. So, yeah. So um, you mentioned that you work with um, a lot of folk music and about the folk traditions of around the world. Could you tell us a few stories about the different folk traditions of the world because I presume they're very different. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've been honoured to work with people who are quite experienced in working with Georgian music. So I worked on a project called Sing for Water where we used to always feature songs from Eastern Europe every year in our repertoire. So Sing for Water is a big event that happens every year in London. And also there are lots of Sing for Waters around the country, but we would always include um, an Eastern European piece of music because the, the person who founded that event, which is where lots of singers come from all over the country to raise money for water aid. And we have a big concert, a big fundraiser. Um, the founder of that movement 
was deeply involved with Georgian music and and uh, and so that was one of that was one one folk tradition also um been very honored to learn about different forms of music from different countries within the African continent so within South Africa and I've learned to sing in also my um within my own choirs I have people from different backgrounds so for example I have a you know people from Europe within my choirs as well who sometimes suggest and ask can we sing European songs uh, when we were all thinking about Ukraine uh, we all sang Ukraine songs in solidarity with Ukraine I can't say that we just had to hope for the best with our pronunciation but you know we did it in solidarity with the with the Ukrainian people when the when the war broke out and um yeah so so from all kinds of different areas of the world and i'm continually learning i've also learned an enormous amount from um indian chant and mantra and been been very influenced by indian musicians around me including a, an amazing musician called sri sriram whose um project i worked on and he was he trained in classical indian music and then went into pop and he put together like into Western music. So he brought all his Indian classical training into Western pop music and then has composes his own music. And I worked on a project with him. So yeah, I've had, I've been really blessed to work with some extraordinary musicians with incredible musical lineage. And I think that's a wonderful thing when we can all, I think it's a, I think it's a force for peace when we understand each other's musics and we listen to each other's music and we appreciate each other. Um, and we appreciate and love all the different flavors that music can bring. And we also see commonalities. And I think that's really important. Of course. And uh, one of the things that I picked up while well, I did a bit of research, because I always like to research the people that I invite on the show and be become well prepared. And one of the things that I saw was, um, we'll talk about your podcast shortly, but... You did a solo episode where you talked about your album, um, Flame, that was released in 2021. And you talked about how you were influenced to write that album, uh, or produce that album, during uh, the pandemic, during lockdown. And it, it was a really good um, way of... Uh, um, adjective which is you described us all being in lockdown as being in fire because you wanted to emulate fire which is why you came up with the title Flame for the album yes yes that's right thank you that's right and I did feel like there are these processes sometimes in our lives that are challenging but you know the thing about fire is it can be destructive uh, but it can also be incredibly creative and it's how you use it so um for me that feeling with lockdown was well we've got to in a way burn through some of this that we're experiencing it's challenging for all of us but we can find those sparks of inspiration within it and i guess that's kind of one of my ways of looking at life generally is with things even when things are very, very challenging, how can I catalyze that into creativity? And I guess because a lot of my work involves working with people who are going through, whether it's health challenges or um, challenges because maybe they're having significant um, trials, caring for another person, or they've got mental health issues that they're battling, um, I guess I just feel I see time and time again that when we are creative, it gives us resource, it gives us power, it gives us energy to transform those experiences into something we can learn and grow through or with. And the creativity can be like a companion that helps us alongside those challenges, if that makes sense. And you also um, uh, produced a piece of music that um, accompanied a film by the Dalai Lama. That must have been a, a great achievement for you because the Dalai Lama is a very, very pr 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 um, predominant figure that um, promotes uh, peace and, you know, harmony. 
Absolutely. Now, that was an incredible honour. And that was, I worked with my very dear friend, um, the film, who directed the film and created the film, who was my friend Leon Stuperich. And he had basically travelled and followed the Dalai Lama around and made this incredible film. And he asked me to make this piece of music to go with the film. And that was, yeah, one of the most incredible honours. And we did this incredible um we did it when we launched the DVD. We did an incredible concert at Union Chapel where we had um, members of the Tibetan community, including the Tibetan Lama, coming to sing with us. And also the Dalai Lama's representative was in a Q&A with the director. And that was one of the greatest honors, I think, of my life. And I feel obviously the Tibetan people are still facing, you know, significant challenge and oppression currently. And, and the Dalai Lama himself is in exile still. So I, I feel very passionately about, again, expressing my solidarity and also my gratitude for the incredible teaching that has become out of that challenge, out of the Tibetan people and out of the Dalai Lama being exiled has come this incredible, uh, you know, sharing of his wisdom with the, with the whole world and with the West. So I'm, I'm incredibly grateful to have done that and to have benefited uh, and been touched as so many people have around the world by his teachings. Because now I want to talk about a bit about your writing career because um, you have had a fascinating writing career. You've wrote for a number of publications, but you also have your own podcast called the um, vocal revolution and that's why you invite various people from the musical world to you know, share about their experience so does sort of your writing and your podcast does that sort of work together absolutely i feel it's about broadcasting and you'll you'll know this because you're doing a wonderful job here here sharing stories and voices and i feel with writing Writing is another form of the voice. You know, it just happens to be written down, uh, but it's still a conversation because it's a conversation with whoever's reading. And it's a, com or, you know, we speak to ourselves in our heads, don't we, as we read. So the voice is um, kind of internalized as we read anything that's written, but actually in the ancient world, they would have read everything aloud actually. So we know that. So what I'm saying is that for me, everything is about voice. So it's all about finding ways to express how to support and share the things that I feel are important to me, but also how to support other people's voices. And that, that podcast series I made, I was very, again, it was something that happened over lockdown because I had time to do it. Um, but it was an amazing experience to be able to interview people who had been very significant to me in my journey and who had been, you know, role models and inspirations to me in many cases, and to share their stories because I wanted to celebrate them and celebrate um, the depths of the conversations that we've had over the years. Because I'm sure you find this, and I'm, I'm sure all of us feel this, is that sometimes you have a conversation, you think, wow, that conversation actually could have been really beneficial for other people to hear because of maybe the concepts that we shared or the ideas that were shared. So you know, I think it, like what you're doing, I think sharing important conversations and and sharing those more widely with our wider community online is an amazing thing that we have at the tips of our fingers now, thanks to technology. So yeah, so for me, it's all about broadcasting, sharing voices, whether it's in the written word, whether it's here on a podcast, whether it's through a voice, through actually singing words, um, you know, it's all the voice for me. And you also do coaching, and I read a bit about what you do, work with people, and you say that it's very important to, um, when you're coaching, to find the person who you work with, to find a space where you can switch off and, and really focus on what they want to focus on, because we always do that when we're sleeping or meditating, but that doesn't come very naturally to us when we're awake. That's right. That's right. And I think that's the beautiful thing about, you know, like we are right this minute, you and I are focusing on this conversation, aren't we? 
and we're you know we're right here with each other and that's an amazing thing and I think it does help us because as I'm just like anyone else I can have you know 20 windows open on my computer and be doing all sorts of things and thinking about all sorts of things but I think there's something magical that happens when we bring our focus into one place and I think that is that happens whenever yeah you said as you said when we meditate or when we sing in a choir we have to focus on listening to the music we can't be thinking about the shopping list or anything else because you know we have to be in the music and it's the same for if you're painting you have to concentrate on the brush strokes or um or yeah if you're having a, a vocal coaching session of course then you're focused on that because you have to really feel the wonderful thing about our voices is inside of us it's not like a violin out here it's inside of us so we have to really when we sing get very aware of how am I standing? Am I standing in the best way for my voice to be shared? How am I breathing? How am I expressing myself emotionally? How am I, you know, responding to the rhythm? Am I moving as my, you know, all these kind of things. So all of that brings us into the present moment and helps us focus. And that's why all of those things can be very good for our mental health because it stops us being all split in pieces and we bring ourselves just for this moment into one place. And that doesn't mean multitasking can be great, you know, as well. And I do lots of that too. But I know there is a magic to focus. Of course. And um, my final point was, um, is how, what is next for you? Or what, what are you going to be releasing more music? Or? Yeah, thank you for asking. Yeah, I'm... I'm planning a release for I'm hoping September um, and it's still just getting confirmed exactly when it's coming out but I'm looking forward to releasing a new piece of music that's a new collaboration that came out as a result of the last album so it was a collaboration that's emerged from making the last album and um, and I'm also working on lots of different projects in the background and working on a book um, as well which is really all about voice and that again will encapsulate a lot of my learning because I've spent over 20 years working with voice and exploring voice in lots of different ways from lots of different angles and researching and I want to try and bring that all together into a book and I've been working on that for quite some time so I'm hoping that that will at some point make its way out into the world um, it takes a long time with books but it's it's coming it's getting closer <laughs> Awesome. I mean, I know all about the publishing and everything because I've worked with a children's publisher. I've also interviewed a few different authors and they always tell me what, you know, the process, is. it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Yeah, I've seen that you've had lots of lovely authors on your on your on your on your interviews. And um yeah, it does. It's not it's really a it's a slow burner. And so I think as as artists we have to kind of be aware of that, you know, whenever you make whenever you set out, whether you're setting out to make an album or a book or it's just being aware that it is a process and being patient with that process because that process is not a straight line. Yeah, it doesn't go A to B and then you tick the box. It kind of is much more like this, you know, like ups and downs. It's a journey. It's like an adventure and you're going to hit valleys and you're going to have to climb mountains and then you'll be by a river and then you'll have a nice sunny spot. You know, so that's the nature of um, creativity. Any creative process is like that. And I think it's in, and it's actually more about what does that process do to us as people? You know, as we go along that journey, we're going to be transformed. We're going to be changed. So that is the magic of the creative process, not just the product that you come up with at the end. That's wonderful, yeah. too. But all the journey you have to go on, you know, um, to get there is what actually changes you as a person. And all that incredible transformation goes into that product and then gets shared with your your people, your audience. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Katie. It's been really delightful to chat with you and you've introduced me to some lovely forms of music today. And, you know, if you know of anybody who, who you work with, who, especially around folk music or anything like that, because I'd be interested in learning more about 
about music from different um countries of the world. So if you could connect me with them sort of people, that would be a great help for me. Fantastic. I'll send you a few suggestions after we after we finish this interview. And I really want to thank you for what you're doing. You're doing a wonderful thing to share and celebrate the work of different artists and different authors. And you're clearly a very, very creative woman yourself and an incredible researcher. So thank you so much for, you know, it's taking so much time to look into my work and inviting me to be here and celebrating other people too. Thank you, Wingy. Um, I'm glad that that came across because I, I, it's not just, I don't just like uh, chatting to the people. I also like researching about the person that I'm chatting to and uh, it makes me forget about my challenges in life that I have to put up with on a day-to-day -day basis and that's the reason why I love what I do and I'll never stop doing it. Well, that's a beautiful thing and that's, you know, that's your creativity, isn't it? That's your gift, one of your many gifts is your gift of research and your curiosity and your interest in other people. And as you say, when we go on a little research journey, it takes us out of our day to day into into another world or thinking about another person's world. And all of that is, you know, we're all a world to ourselves. And it's so interesting and it's so important that we have these spaces where we can share about each other and share our journeys and share the things we've gained in our journeys and so that they can support hopefully or support or inspire or it'd be interesting for somebody else and you're you're doing that in a really beautiful way so thank you very much I, I love what you're doing thank you um so I will sign off now and say thank you for joining me thank you thank you so much thank you for having me